if you want to make a Discord bot but have no knowledge of JavaScript, then you're in luck. Because in this short series, we'll go through the absolute basics of JavaScript. Discord offers its users an API, or application programming interface. The users can use the API to interact with Discord, or in simple words, to create a Discord bot. But to use the API, a good knowledge of a serious programming language is required. For this series, I've decided to go with JavaScript. JavaScript is a lightweight easy to learn programming language. Now some of you might know that, in the early days JavaScript was mainly used for adding logic into websites. Then Node.js was invented. Node.js is a JavaScript runtime environment that allows users to use JavaScript outside of browsers to create applications. In this series we'll learn JavaScript on Node.js because that's where you're likely to create your first Discord bot on. In this episode we will download Node.js on our computer to run JavaScript, then download a text editor to write codes on. Finally we will learn some JavaScript basics like variables and data types. But first this video is sponsored by Salad. So you want free Discord Nitro, you search for it, and now you're doomed. But what if I tell you, there's a legit. Free and working way to get Nitro. Try Salad. Salad is a free passive income app that turns your computer into a money making machine. Salad uses your computer's idle resources in exchange for amazing rewards such as Discord Nitro, PayPal rewards, gift cards, video games, and so on. Now, the idea of free money certainly seems suspicious and brings up questions like how can I trust this? For starters, you can review their code on their GitHub page yourself. Next, it has many positive reviews on websites like Trustpilot and G2. Salad is also an official partner of Discord which is a cherry on top. If you're interested in Salad, go to the first link in the description. Download and install Salad. Enter the required information then it will ask you for a referral code. Bro tip. If you use my code IGP, you will get 2 times earning bonus. Finally click on start to get started and let it run in the background. So turn your computer into a profit making machine by simply clicking the link in the description. Now, back to the video. First, we need to install node.js to run JavaScript. Click on the first result. From here, you can download Node.js on your computer. Note that in future these numbers might change. You should download the LTS one, since it's recommended for most users. Once you're done with the downloading, install Node.js on your computer. It should be straightforward. Next, to start coding, we need a text editor to write codes on. Text editor could be anything like Notepad, Notepad++, Atom. Sublime and so on. But in this video, we are going to use Visual Studio Code, a lightweight text editor. Let's download it on our computer. Click on download for Windows. Your download should begin shortly. Once the downloading is done open the setup. The installation should be straightforward here too. Now we need to make a new folder. I'm just gonna create one on my desktop. Name it whatever you like. This folder will be our first JavaScript project. Now open Visual Studio Code. Click on Open Folder. Navigate to the folder we just created and click on Select Folder. Click on Yes. I trust the authors. We opened the same empty folder, but in Visual Studio Code. Now we need to open this folder in a terminal. Either you can open CMD and navigate to your project, or there's an integrated terminal in Visual Studio Code that by default opens your project in its terminal. Both work the same, so you're allowed to use whatever makes you comfortable. Now enter npm init in your terminal. You can enter your project name here. If you leave it blank and hit enter, it will use the name inside brackets. You really don't have fill these as you're just starting out. This is the entry point option. This will help letting the project know what is the main file of our project. Your main file can have any name, but it has to end with .js because the main file needs to be a JavaScript file. Enter your file name here. I'm gonna use index.js, so I won't enter anything as the default option here is index.js. These options are not necessary, so you can skip them. Hit enter. It has automatically created a package.json file, 
we need this file in order to make a Node.js project. NPM init created one for us. If you click on it, a bunch of random text may appear on your screen. But if you look at it closely, it has information of our projects such as name, description, entry point and so on. This is what we call a JSON file. You will learn more about JSON files later. Now let's create a main file. Write the name of the entry point you had entered earlier. This is the main file of our project, where we can finally write codes on. Let's start with the most basic one. This is what we call a console.log function. It takes some input inside the brackets, and then log or print it on the console, which in our case is the terminal. Don't worry we'll cover functions more throughly in the upcoming episodes. Let's run this code. But we have to save this file first, to do so. Go to file, and click on save. You should memorize the shortcut ctrl plus s, because you're going to save a lot in future. Now let's run our code. Just go back to your terminal, and enter node dot. You ran your first code. <laughs> Before we proceed, let's understand the difference between a statement and expression in JavaScript. An expression is a piece of code that returns or produces some value, while statement is a line of code that does some action. Here hello world is an expression, and this whole line of code is a statement. A semicolon separates statements in JavaScript, but we can actually ignore it in this case, and the code will still work the same. JavaScript allows us to skip semicolons, but they are necessary in some cases, which we will discuss later. Now let's learn about variables. To understand it, let's take an example. Let's say you have some apples, and you store them in a basket. We can also call this basket a container. You put a name on the basket, so you can easily tell what does the basket contain. We can call this an identifier. Now we can easily access these apples anywhere. This is exactly how a variable works. A variable is a container for storing data. In the previous case, the apples were the expression. And the basket was the variable. We can create a variable like this in JavaScript. First we write any one of these keywords, then a name or identifier of the variable, and then an equal sign and then optionally an expression. Let's try making a variable. We declared a variable here with the identifier first number, and the expression 3. Now we can use this variable anywhere in the place of 3, like here. Let's run it. First save the file, and then no dot in the terminal. As you can see it printed the value of first number which was 3. We can also reassign a variable's value by not using any keyword before it. We can reassign a variable as many times as we like. The last assign will be the variable's value. There are three keywords to make a variable in JavaScript namely, let, const, and var. All three keywords work in the same way except in const, which stands for constant. You cannot reassign a variable. If you try to do so, you will get an error. Use const when you're certain the variable's value will remain the same. Even though var is same as let, there's a difference which is quite advanced for now. So we will discuss about let const var in detail on a different episode. Know this for now let is an updated version of var, so you should only use let and const in your code. Now let's discuss the rules for naming a variable in JavaScript. JavaScript variables name can have letters, numbers, underscore and dollar sign, but you can't start a variable name with a number. Also you cannot use special characters, punctuations, or spaces in a variable's name. There are some keywords and reserved words in JavaScript that we can't use as a variable's name. Don't worry about memorizing them, we will get an error if we accidentally write a keyword as a variable's name. One thing to note that variable names are case sensitive. For example these words are four different variables. One change of case can bring a huge impact on the variable. You should name variables depending on what value they contain. Like how in the previous example I named the variable first number. It's same as how you wouldn't like a basket of apples with a misleading name on it. Also if you need to use more than one word, you could do it in this way. Except the first word all of the words are capitalized. This way is called the camel case. Remembering this way isn't hard, and is good for readers. Now let's talk about the basic data types in JavaScript. 
The first one is number. Number type is 4 representing numbers that could either be positive or negative. It could also be a decimal number. Next one is string. We show text in this type. When we want to make a string, we write our text and then surround them by quotation marks. Note that apostrophe or single quotation marks works too. If you recall our first code, you will notice that the hello world was also a string. Next we have boolean. The possible value for this data type is either true or false. They are generally to indicate things like yes or no and on or off. Next we have symbol. Symbols are still quite advanced right now, so I will skip them for now. Finally we have undefined and null. Undefined means the variable has no value. Do you recall when I had said and then optionally an expression? Here's what I meant. A variable is undefined. If we remove equal sign and expression part, let's check if it's really undefined. We can also undefine a defined variable like this. My variable is now undefined. Moving on to null. Null means empty or unknown value. We can make a variable null like this. We can say that my variable is null. Now let's talk about comments. Comments are for putting messages in our code. They are ignored by JavaScript, so we can write whatever we want. We can make comments by writing two forward slashes followed by the message. They can be used anywhere in the code. This is called single line comment. There's another way to create comments called multi line comment. Multi line comments are used for writing comments in multiple lines. To create multi line comments, we first open a tag by writing a forward slash, then an asterisk sign. After that, we write our message. This time we can break lines. After we are done with the message we close this tag by an asterisk sign and a forward slash. They are usually for explaining how does a line of code work. Because some codes are not self-explanatory. They can also be used for leaving some important notes for someone. And that's it for this video. If you completely understood everything, click here to watch the next part. Also, if you enjoyed this video, click on the subscribe button, so you don't miss videos like this one. Thank you so much for watching, I'll see you next time.